Dance. Well, it's the start. Dance. This, uh, the funny thing is, welcome to the Jay and Dan podcast, brought to you by Mark's Perfectly Pressed Shirts. Uh, happy to have Mark's on board as a sponsor. Uh, Jay Onright, Dan O'Toole from Sports Center. A couple of things. That's the wrong music. <laughs> we asked for uh, music from, from our coverage of Euro 2012, and that is not the right music. We sort of uh, we had a good little bit going over the summer uh, with the whole dance thing, but it was to a different European music bed. This is the wrong one. So right off the top, the podcast is ruined. <laughs> I think it's par for the course. Yeah, that's okay. Um, we're thrilled to be here with you. We don't know what we're doing, and no. it'll it'll show. My mother's pretty excited. Uh, I told her, "Hey, Jay and I are uh, are taping a podcast." She said, "What? Uh, what's a podcast?" And I told her uh, I didn't have much of an explanation. I said, "We it's kind of like radio, but it's not." Then you just punched her right in the face. <laughs> that's right. Can't believe you don't know what it is, Mom. You never supported me. Actually, what the the best comment I keep getting from people is, oh, way to get on board with the podcast thing right off the top, guys. We're like the last guys to do a podcast. That's it. Everyone else has done one. Your mom probably is doing a podcast, and she just <laughs> pretended she didn't know what podcasts were just so she didn't hurt your feelings. She's like, what a loser. I can't believe they're the last ones. They're the last ones to do a podcast? What is our podcast going to be about, Dan? Uh, it's going to be about, I think we're all going to learn a little something about ourselves. Uh, don't know what that is. We're going to search deep into our souls. Probably learn about uh, me growing up on a farm. Oh, that sounds nice. No, nah, it was... The hellish life. Yeah, you drowned a lot of pigs. Whoa! You did, didn't you? You, you were like runs. the Michael Vick of the Peterborough County. <laughs> Weren't you? Just drowning pigs. No, I mean, that's that happens. People the runs. understand. Yeah, people understand how farms work. Well, maybe they don't, actually. Have you ever pick stones? I never had to do any manual labor, doesn't it show? My hands are like George Costanza's hands in the hand modeling episode. It's have I, beautiful. Have I discussed smooth. picking stones to you? Milky white? No, you haven't. You walk in front of a tractor that's driven very slowly in a field that's 50 acres. You pick up stones that have risen to the surface after the field's been plowed. You do this every year. Every single summer. You pick rocks out of a field. So I guess the... Big question would be, that sounds like hard work. Why are you so physically inept? <laughs> that was years ago. Oh, okay. That's so you've had years to, to drink and, and booze yourself into the physical pathetic specimen <laughs> that you are right now. I was like seven when I was doing that. But the, the sound of the rock hitting the bucket on the tractor haunts oh, me to this day. It's just yeah. it's just a piercing sound right to the core of your brain. Just like Christian Leitner hitting that bucket for Duke winning the national championship. You loved that sound, didn't you? <sighs> no, you didn't like that sound. Growing let's, up on a farm's good, though. Okay, let's talk about oh. what the podcast is oh, going oh, yeah, to be. Sorry, sorry. Let's get back, back to that. Got Come on. Track. Uh, current events. Just current event. We're talking news. We're not going to be sports guys sports. anymore. Sports. We're yeah. going to talk about sports. It's going to be about sports. We're going to have guests on the show. Today we have a couple of guests. We'll get to them in just a second. It's the Jay and Dan podcast brought to you by Mark's Perfectly Pressed Shirts. By the way, you don't have time to iron, right? Nobody has time to iron their damn shirts. No. Right? You barely have time to shower. Who showers anymore? Does anyone even, does anyone run water on their bodies with soap? <laughs> Nobody does that. There's no time. No. So everyone smells awful. You can have the time to shower by putting on one of Mark's perfectly pressed shirts. You just head out the door. The shirt's in the dryer. Maybe for a couple of seconds, you head out the door. You look fantastic. Sure, you forgot to take a dump, but who cares? You'll I, take it at work. They gave us a tour of the store. I thought they were going to have two, uh, two shirts, like a, a white kind and a blue kind. No. no. They, they had like a freezer in the store as well. They've got they've got clothing scientists at Marks. Yeah, and it's Marks, by the way. Yeah, no more. Yeah. Morning. Who are you? Are you Kermit? Well, I didn't want to sing the jingle in case they got mad at us and cancel their sponsorship. No, we don't want that. No, they're just Marks now, uh, so we're happy that they uh, they're on board. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit first of all about our summer. We had a very busy, busy summer. Um, we actually worked. 
Dan, would you say that? The way it was supposed to go, I was supposed to go over to the Olympics in London, and we were supposed to do our show, Sports Center, the Olympic Suppertime Spectacular. I'm in London in Trafalgar Square. You're here in beautiful Scarborough. We did a week of that. Three shows. Okay. Yeah, we did three shows like that, and it seemed to be going well. Then... Almost, I I was incredulous. This company spent money they didn't have to spend. This had never happened in the history of TSN before. And they actually flew you over first class to London to cover the games with me. How excited were you when you first got the news? Uh, Ken Volden, one of our bosses, he uh, saddled up next to me in the newsroom on a Thursday. He asked me, uh, how excited as a kid did you get on Christmas Eve? I said, I don't know. I was a regular kid. Why are you sitting so close to me? Um, get your hand off my leg. I used to get rocks as a kid at Christmas. Daddy, what are we getting? Rocks, again. You pick them. You pick them, I wrap them. I painted faces on them. What do you want? So he said, uh, well, there's a, a strong chance you're going to London tomorrow. I said, well, what, what changed? He said, well, we didn't think the shot would look that good. We thought there'd be a massive delay. We didn't know we could do highlights from there. So uh, the next day I was on a plane, and then I was on the air, and the next day with you on the Saturday in London. I, I was thrilled. I mean, it was great having you over there. One small problem, and this was, uh, this was something that people seemed to really enjoy. You had no credentials to get into any Olympic events. Um, it was too late. There's there's a reason for it. You have to apply for Olympic credentials like six months in advance. they got to check your background. Were you a rock picker? Uh, did you put your hands on, on other boys' knees when you were young? Uh, they've got to check that kind of stuff, and they didn't have time to check it for Dan, so we couldn't get him Olympic cred- credentials. But people enjoyed that aspect of our coverage. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a charade. It was the truth. Yeah, exactly. I had a visitor's pass into our broadcast facility in Trafalgar Square for the entire duration of the Olympics. So really, you didn't even have a pass to work on our set location. No, visitors. No. So, uh, But you had a chance to shop every day. So literally, I would go see events because I didn't care if you couldn't go see events. I was going to go see them. I didn't give a damn about you. So I would go and see events. You would shop, and you literally bought a different pair of shoes every day during the game. About three different pairs of shoes. I wanted to have London-made dress shoes. And so you saw the whole city. You explored the entire city. I did. I saw a lot. It's massive. I just scratched the surface, though. Barely. Right. It is a massive, massive town. I have a little story. At the very end, after the closing ceremonies, we watched the closing ceremonies together at Canada House, which is sort of like the Canadian Embassy in London. It's very cool. I'll always remember that. And that's where Canada Olympic House was for the Games. So tons of Canadians, parents of Olympians, sponsors, everybody was there. It was a blast. All drinking Molson Canadian. Everybody drinking Molson Canadian, having some... Some booze, watching the closing ceremonies, watching the Spice Girls. Everyone got excited when the Spice Girls came on. And then um, we had an an English makeup artist named Carol. uh, And she talked like this. And she said, Dan, you look like a young Harrison Ford. And I was like, oh, God, Carol. (laughs) You want to get in his pants or what? Just tell him. So anyway, Carol was nice. She was 40-ish, we'll say. Prim, proper English woman. Uh, we get to this closing ceremonies, our entire crew's there with us. All of a sudden, everyone's gone. Next thing I know, it's just you, me, and her, okay? And so we're sitting there watching The Who. You go off to take a leak or something, yep. and now it's just me and her. So uh, I, like, I saw what was coming, so I uh, skedaddled. So she uh, she's sitting next to me, and we're watching The Who, and I make, you know, just to make conversation, I say, wow, Roger Daltrey sounds, uh, he sounds fantastic, doesn't he, Carol? Silence. No response. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Okay, I guess uh, looks like maybe she's had a little too much to drink. Next thing I know, she stands up and falls flat on her face in front of the entire Canada House. It was unbelievable. Someone from Canada House came running over to me and they said, Dan, I think your makeup lady's dead. (laughs) She had consumed two bottles of wine to herself. I, no one I, had seen this happen. No, I did. You saw her drinking all that wine? I'd, like, I'd go to get some food or something, and I'd, I'd see that her white wine glass, she drank white wine. I saw that it was empty, so I, oh, Carol, you want her? Yeah, so I usually don't, but I'll have some more. I have, please, sir, can I have some more? So I, I, I gave her at least six glasses. Great, so you're an enabler. No, I didn't know that she was 
but you got her home. You didn't know she was such a lightweight. Well, this is the story. So she falls on her face. I mean, she fell right on her face in front of 300 people right in front of me. I felt so bad. I'm like, this is a concussion situation. we got to make sure she's all right. She's got to go into the safe room like the hockey players do. But there were doctors there. There were. That was the good thing. Lots of sports medicine people on hand, of course, because it was the Olympics. So they gave her great care, stayed with her for a little while. And I said, because everyone had abandoned me, <laughs> I'll t- make sure she gets home. So I get in a cab with her. We go back to her house. She barely knows how to get back to her own place. I'm lost. I don't know anything about London. We get back to her apartment. I get her up the stairs, and she says, I wish your camera guy was here. She had a crush on our camera guy. So you weren't going to cut it. I wish Dean were here and not you. Oh, thanks a lot, lady. I just, I, you ruined my whole night. I made sure you got home so you weren't, you know, we didn't wake up dead. And you wish another guy was here so you could have sex with him. You... The English, they drive me nuts. That, that's your Olympic experience. That's basically what happened at the Olympics. That's it. She also told me, um, beside the Harrison Ford comment, she said, Yeah, the most, no, you're the most British, known British person I've ever met. What does that even mean? I don't know. I, th- I took it as a compliment. British people drown runts? <laughs> Possibly. Uh, my, uh... My Olympic uh, memories were summed up in one uh, one fell swoop. We were outside, I don't know if you remember this day, we were outside Buckingham Palace shooting something. We were shooting one of those bits where we, uh, what is Dan eating? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, what oh, England are you eating? And I almost vomited. That was the, the pork scratchings. Oh, okay, it wasn't the jelly deals? No, it was the pork scratchings, which if you've ever, again, been to a farm, you know what a, uh, a shaved horse hoof looks like. It gets all shriveled up in the sun, and that's what it tasted like I was eating. That's what it looked like. That's what it tasted like. It's pork skin, though. Beautifully salted, But it was like rocks. You must have to soak them or something. No, you eat them like chips. Anyway, so I I barely scarfed that down without vomiting. Um, And then you and uh, Charlotte, our intern, who spent, what, two months in broadcasting school? Yeah. Full accreditation. She went to events every day. So she says, uh, yeah, Jay, I'll come to beach volleyball with you. One problem, I've got my bike here. Because beach volleyball was about 20 yards from Buckingham Palace. So as I rode Charlotte's bike across central London. A woman's bike. I said, this is the Olympics. Yeah, the Olympics on CTV. Another thing about uh, Carol, our makeup artist, as she was drunk, she was like, you love Charlotte, don't you? You love her, don't you? I'm like, no, uh, Carol, I, I don't love this broadcast intern. I have no interest in it. You love her, I know you do. It's going to work out. I'm like, Carol, what? It's going to was and this it, the, Was this the closing ceremony night? Yes. I never heard this. Yes. Wow. She's got some problems. All right, so that was our 2012. And then we came back and did the craft tour. I lost my voice. Early on in the, on the yeah, craft so track. we arrived back in Canada on Monday. We were in Newfoundland Thursday, and um, I think I can speak for Jay when Newfoundlanders are um, them and Saskatchewanites are two favorite uh, places to visit. Yeah, I, it, the, we just had the best time. They put on a social force. We've been screeched in, I think, four or five times. Yeah, now. enough of the screech. You're only supposed to be screeching once. No, I like it. I find with screech, and if you don't know, screech is is the Newfoundland rum. That, that you drink super strong, 40% alcohol, that you're supposed to drink uh, drink a shot of, and then you've been screeched in. You're, you're officially, I guess, you're officially a Newfoundlander because you've been screeched in. And we've been screeched in several times. You're only supposed to be screeched in once. We did the whole ceremony. You have to eat a fish, like a, a sardine or something. You have to eat this, uh, this piece of bread that's really hard. You have you to go through this whole process, and we had to, yeah. yeah You've got to kiss the cod, yeah, right? You've got to make sweet love to a fish. But last time they gave us a cod that had been sitting under a bar for about a week. Yeah. I couldn't get that fishy smell off my lips. This one was fresh and delicious. Yeah. I just wanted to tongue that fish. So, yeah, we had, uh, we were in Newfoundland. Yeah. And then we made our way across small town Canada. Yeah. Eventually ended up in Trenton. Uh, so we take a bus on the craft tour. It's a lot of fun, except for we had two 10 hour journeys. We had to go up to Shakutami. Yeah. And then all the way back. And Shakutami kind of threw a wrench in the plans. But, hey, 
It's a great town. Uh, Shikudami, beautiful town. One small problem. Nobody understood anything we were saying. Understandably, it's 100% francophone. And as such, 100 people showed up for our show. And 97 of them were there to see RDS, <laughs> our sister station from Quebec. Uh, three of them were there to see us. And two of them had big, massive heads of us. Yeah, that was great. That was Thank very God they showed up. Creepy, but... That was neat. Creepy. And then we finished the craft tour, and then we went to Prince George, British Columbia for a fundraiser, a YMCA front fundraiser. Wonderful time. Weirdest thing, though, we get to Prince George, and we start to get tweets from people that say, are you guys here with Frankie Muniz? Is it Muniz or Muniz? I think it's Muniz. Muniz from Malcolm in the Middle. I never watched He was that. Malcolm on yeah. Malcolm in the Middle, he was. right? And so we're like, why are you, what, Frankie Muniz? Why, why, what are you talking about? Anyway, turns out... Um, that Frankie now is no longer acting. For a while, I believe he was racing cars, uh, and then he was just going to L.A. Clippers games, and now he is a drummer in a fledgling indie rock band that was playing the Prince George University's Frosh Week barbecue. Did he make he enough money off Malcolm in the Middle? He's so he's okay. Still, he's probably still making money. Residuals, off. okay. Yeah. I mean, it, I guess it depends what he did with his money. He bought a lot of cars. He's like the, the next generation's Jay Leno. Without the uh, without the full gene on gene. Yeah, exactly. Frankie actually got into a little trouble a few years ago. I don't know if you remember this situation. It was him and his fiance, and there was a nine one one call. I don't know if we happen to have that on hand. Let's let, take a listen to that. I don't, I don't want to make a big deal because I'm, I'm, I'm a celebrity. My my girlfriend is drunk and she's going crazy okay. and she's trashing my house. Literally, lamps, everything. <laughs> And she's going crazy. She's hitting me in the face. I don't know what to do because I'm, I'm, I'm about to lose control. I don't want any charges. I just want her to stop and run stuff. Babe, you, you just damaged the house. You're still damaging it. Just leave it, just leave it where it is, babe. I did not hit you. You punched me in the face when I was sleeping. Punched me in the face when, when I was When was sleeping. this? I was like, you punched year. me in the face? Yeah, I punched her in the face. No, she punched him in the face. He's just a tiny guy, isn't he? He's like, I don't want to make a big deal about this because I'm a celebrity, but my girlfriend's trash in my place. Are they still together? I think they might be. Ooh, it's not, it's not healthy. Well, maybe it is. He was Sometimes your... they say couples that don't don't fight aren't are the unhealthy ones. Uh, he was on your flight home, wasn't he? Well, this is just it. So, you know, we we go, we went out. We like to socialize a little bit when we go across the country and so we went out to uh, the B Dave Bedini from the Rio Statics his new band the Bedini band was performing at a pub that night we went out to see him he actually described it as like going back in time 30 years to his first gig because no one was paying attention to anything he was saying <laughs> I'm sorry Dave I hope you're listening to this podcast uh, because you guys were great that night but you know we had a great night we went out late we went to the generator yes right? the nightclub in town I what saw I I almost lost my lunch because I went into the washroom at the generator and someone had vomited in a urinal. And I believe that they just finished eating like a 24 ounce steak and maybe chewed twice per bite. So they literally vomited the whole T bone oh, right into was, the urinal. Uh, and I don't do well with that, seeing that. So I walked into the. That's ingrained in my brain. That and riding a woman's bike across central London. You, you're very, you're a glamorous man. It's all <laughs> glamour with Dan O'Toole. Could you not make it to the, the crapper? Well, you know, you, you see the, maybe they saw the urinal cakes there and there was an offending smell and they just thought, I'm going to cover this up with my own steak vomit. <laughs> my steak vomit. But no, so we go out that night and I stayed up all night. I had to fly back the next day. You stayed an extra day. I had to fly back the next day. So I'm admittedly a little worse for wear as I get to the airport. And I'm sitting there in the, in the sort of waiting area to hop on the plane to Vancouver. And who do I see across from me? Old Frankie. And he, he looked healthier than I did, a lot healthier than I did. He went, back, he went to bed. Yeah, well, I think he just, he might have stayed up all night too. But he tweeted, he said he had a great time in Prince George. So I think the point is, Frankie, good guy. And, uh, and, and all his bandmates were 12, 13 inches taller than he was, at least. They were at the generator. Foot. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, right? Frankie Moon is. And you didn't get a picture. No, I know. I thought about it, but then I, I thought maybe not. Then I was recently in Los Angeles, Dan, and I saw uh, Ron Jeremy at, uh, at a bar. 
And man, he looks awful. I, I mean, you know he's going to look bad, but he looks greasy and fat and just. He's pathetic. always looked that way. But you know what? He was so friendly with everyone who came up to talk to him. I guess he just wants to hold on to a little bit of that fame. And he probably still scores. Well, that's his job, though. Maybe it's boring for him now. Tired of sex. So is it a CD bar? Does he hang out at high-class establishments? I only go to CD bars. You know that, Dan. Yeah, this is true. And on the way back from that trip, by the way, a nice young fellow came up to me and said, do you mind signing this? I said, sure. I look, he wanted me to sign a medical marijuana book. I said, you know what? Maybe I better not sign that book. Why don't I sign something else for you? He's like, no problem. That's great. He said, can I get a picture with you? I went, get off the plane. No problem. We get off the plane. I wait for him to get off the plane. I'm like, you want to do a picture? He's like, yeah, sounds good. What's your name? <laughs> Big fan. I said, what? Are you joking? Yeah, no, I don't watch a lot of sports TV. Why did you yeah. want my... Uh, on, during the craft tour, we do these autograph tents, and we, we thank everyone that uh, comes to the tents, and um, the majority of the people, they, they want to, like, have a little chat and stuff, but uh, there's also a high percentage of people that are just happy to be out of their house. Yeah. And they're just, they're, they don't care if they're waiting in line because they, they aren't home and smelling the cat litter and stuff. So I remember. Are you describing your own house? No. It's, we have a cat, but I keep that cat litter and it's buried in the basement. You'd never know we had a cat. You like to, sometimes when the, fam, the rest of the family's out of the house, you like to just dig your hands into that cat litter and just take a good whiff. What's the protocol if you do walk into someone you know and their house smells like cat urine? I, I just hate it. I, I feel like someone needs to tell them. You say, hey, Sibalski, your house smells like cat piss. <laughs> you don't even have a cat. Hey, Seaballs, I know you don't have a cat, but some cat pissed in here. <laughs> Clean it up. So anyway, um, we're at this uh, this tent. We're sitting side by each, and uh, I'm talking to someone, and some old lady <laughs> walks up to Onright. Ah, uh, are you Chris or Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Again, no, I, they're, just, they're just happy to be out. Eating craft products, just stuff in their pockets of Oreos. Just stuff in their face with cheese whiz and dreams. Now, uh, another tour going on right now is the CFL train tour, Dan. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, a fascinating thing. Literally, the Grey Cup is traveling across the country on a train and then eventually, of course, ending up in Toronto for the 100th Grey Cup in November. Yeah, I'm... I'm baffled that the, the train still goes across the country. I didn't know you could take the train across the country still. Seems like it would be a lot of fun. It would it? be. You think there's a lot of sex going on on that train? Sex train. Uh, it's probably a lot of old people. I don't, I don't see of, young people doing that. A lot of old people having sex. Yeah, stuff goes on in seniors' homes you don't want to know about. Is that true? Yes. I always hear that, but you wonder. You hear from nurses. A lot of diddling. <laughs> no, there's what? a lot of... Oh. When they're in the mood, they are in the mood. Oh, I understand. They're getting boners. And when you walk in on them, they don't stop because they don't know if it's ever coming back. But that's the beauty of it, right? No, exactly. Like, a nurse walks in on you, you're an old man, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to be dead soon. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> what do I care? <laughs> what? You can't say that. I can't? It's a... Or maybe you can. I, I don't think you could say that. On podcasts? Yeah, I think you could say <laughs> on podcasts. Maybe. We'll figure that out. If it's beeped along. out. Uh, so anyway, yeah, there was a moment of the uh, the CFL train tour that uh, you tweeted, said it was your favorite moment ever in the history of Sports Center. I Maybe I exaggerated a bit, but it's definitely, if I had a top 10, we do our top 10 on Sports Center every night. If I had a top 10 moments in the history of Sports Center, it was not just this portion of the CFL train tour. So we should explain. Kate McKenna is our uh, our reporter from TSN who goes on the CFL train tour. She's been on the tour the entire time. She'll be there right until it gets to Toronto. And she is reporting on each stop of the train tour. CFL Kate. I believe it's at CFL Kate on Twitter. Yes. She can follow what she does. Uh, she's fantastic. By the way, she looks identical to Kate Burnett. They could be like sisters. Her. They really could. So uh, she reports from all these stops. She was in Edmonton on this particular stop. And uh, she was reporting on a couple that had painted their house in Edmonton Eskimo colors. Take a listen to this. Well, number one, the house needed a paint job. It's like 107 years old. We had a chance to pick up this green and gold paint. Uh, pretty reasonable, so I said, why not, eh? For the Eskimos. <laughs> okay. We need, to, we need to play that again. And what I, I want you to play that again. And then afterward, Dan had an Everton 
English Premier League soccer highlight pack. I want you to listen to Dan trying his very best. Well, this is to the first time laugh. I'd I'd never seen it. I'd never heard of it, and so it just. It, it was incredible. I loved his reaction to this. So listen again. Afterward, you'll hear Dan trying to stifle a laugh. Well, number one, the house needed a paint job. It's like 100-something years old. We had a chance to pick up this green and gold paint. Uh, pretty reasonable. So I said, why not, eh? For the Eskimos. <laughs> Why not, eh? Why not, eh? <laughs> These are Everton highlights, by the Everton and Newcastle. Oh. Uh, okay, there was an offside. That one is a crossbar. The goals in award. The ball clearly crossed the line, though. Play carries on. Why not, eh? <laughs> is that all bet? Uh, scores! Everton has the lead. Moments later, ball deflects to Dembaba. Dem Baba. <laughs> oh man. Why not, eh? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> got me so up. I literally well you saw me. You were on the set with me. I I, don't know. I the the one of the most fun times we have on the show is when that kind of thing happens because I can see the seeds of it happening before it happens. I when when we're watching that CFL train story and I look over at you and you are barely keeping it together, I knew that you're not going to be able to get it together for the highlights that follow it. So the thing is, if you watch the show, our uh, Sports Center show, at one a.m. when it's live, you see that stuff because right. that got cut out of the show for the loop. That's well, and that's just it. You know, some we don't we don't want to offend anyone. I thought it was great. A couple of things I loved. The fact that the couple said they got a good deal on the paint. That was the main reason that they painted it in their team's colors. Had they got a, a deal on Stampeder's paint colors, maybe they would have painted it red and silver. And Kate is the one who conducted that interview, and she's riding the train across the country. Kate, how much of a deal did they get on the paint? Did you find out? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. Oh God, it was funny. Uh, I don't know how much of a deal they got, but I hope it was a pretty good one. But they seriously must have got a really good deal because, oh, yeah, it looked good though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it stood out. I actually asked her. Uh, I asked her if she was concerned at all about re- resale value, and uh, she said she didn't think the house was worth much. So. You know what? She, she's there. a realist. She's yeah. she's being realistic about it. I like oh, that about her. Bless her heart. And you know what? She was terrified when, like, we so we set up the cup, and then we totally Nikki Nikki nine doored her. So we ran up, knocked the door, and then took our position, crouched behind a bush, and uh, and she comes to the door, and she she peers out. And we see her peer out. So we're just waiting for her to come out, hoping that she has this explosive reaction, and she just closes the door and goes back in. <laughs> Well, are you, are you going across the country just trying to terrify people? Well, I'm not terrify. I mean, if I did that in Regina, it would it would result in a street party, right? Like, you yeah. got to think that if her house is painted green and gold, she's pretty excited to see the Grey Cup. So she but saw think, the Grey. She, she opened the door, her. saw the Grey Cup, and just shut the door again. <laughs> Correct. Correct. It was not the intended reaction. How's the How's the train trip? So you you caught the train Good. in Vancouver. Yeah. Do you have to sleep on the train? Yeah, not every night, but some nights we slept overnight from uh, Vancouver to Jasper. And uh, usually we're, you know, we're, we travel on the train each day, and usually we're in hotels each night, but there are some nights where, where we are overnight. Is it a party, Kate? Is, is it is it just... It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun, yeah. It's, it's, it's totally what you'd expect. Like, there's food, and people are hanging out, and one guy plays a guitar, and, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 there are worse ways to travel, that's for sure. But you aren't on it at all, at all times, because you were in Red Deer the other day. The train doesn't go down to Red Deer, does it? Well, yeah, the train pulled into Red Deer, oh. and uh, we Dan, got off. And Dan doesn't hotel. know where the train goes, Kate. Don't listen to him. <laughs> I have no idea. I should look That's at Okay, You're just making it up. It's yeah, cool. he is. That's uh, we're, Just like we're making up this podcast. By the way, you're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast presented by Mark. You're, Kate, you're the first ever guest on the CFL, or really? the, CFL the, the Jay and Dan podcast. It's true. You I, are. Thank you. How, did you. So you finally decided on Jay and Dan. Yes, Not we Danny did. Jay. Yeah, well, I think okay. that was the way it should have been all along. Right, of course you did, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would think that. Tell us right. more about yourself, Kate. Where, now, where, tell us about your background, because I think our, our viewers and our listeners would like to know a little bit about you. Uh, well, I uh, started with uh, the Thai Cats actually, as uh, their in-game host and online host was the girl up on the video board and all that. 
And uh, then, actually, last year, the traveling thing's not new to me. So last year, I uh, I won a competition to be a professional vacationer. So my, it's been a really hard career. It's what? been really, really tough. That's yeah. unreal. So where'd you get the vacation? Yeah. Uh, so I went to 23 cities. I was in Europe and the Caribbean. And what? so it was just me. So I, I shot, edited, hosted, and uh, just told people about cool things to do around the world. That sounds like the greatest job of all time. And it now you're working cool. for us. This must be very yeah. depressing for you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I certainly don't have a business card anymore that says professional vacationer, but I kept one just to show it off when I'm 60 and need to prove that I did that. That's the coolest story. I never knew that. Yeah, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. But and you said you were in... to... Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. No, no. And then after that, uh, approached the CFL, said what's going on, and then was at the uh, Combine, and some of the great CFL and TSM producers were there, and and there you go. That's how that's how it's done. I don't know if I'd say great, Kate. <laughs> they're, right, they're, I suppose it depends who you're talking about. They're adequate, I suppose. <laughs> right. The show gets to air. Now, right. Correct, yeah. When do you arrive in Toronto with the Great Cup? November 15th is the, is the last day. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So you still have the whole it's, month it's of October on a train. We're, oh, yeah. We're day 12 of 70. Oh, my. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah. you're And you're doing a loop, like you're going all through the Maritimes, right, Kate, and up into yeah, Quebec? Yeah, so we're going. So now we go into, so we're in Calgary this weekend. Then we head to Regina and Winnipeg. And then there are a few flights in there. So it's, it's mostly trains, but there are definitely planes and automobiles for sure. So we go up to, uh, where, where do we go first? We go to um, St. John's. And then we go out to Charlottetown, and then we fly back and take a, an army chopper up to Iqaluit, which will be pretty cool. Wow, that's awesome. You're going up to Iqaluit. That's I nuts. I am. Are you I'm, slightly get... concerned. I'm slightly concerned, though, because I'm a terrible flyer, which is really funny since I've been flying a lot the past two years. Okay. But I'm a terrible flyer, and the commissioner is going to be on there and the cup and probably a lot of other important people. So. You, you know, just take drugs. That. Just take a oh, lot of drugs. I do. Okay, I do. good. And are you going to get yeah. screeched in in Newfoundland, Kate? Well, that's the plan, yes. That, that is the plan. I've been told I have to do that, so I would like to. Now, Kate, how often, and we've talked about it on the show a little bit, uh, do you, how often do you get asked if you're Kate Burness's sister? I feel like you guys look so much alike and, and also sound a little alike. A, a little bit. I, I've gotten it a few times. You know what I get more? I get... Jody Foster a ton. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Usually with like the over forty-five demographic, right? But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, wait a second. Jody Foster's like fifty. Yeah, I know. I I, I, I kind of get offended every time. But then and then I think they see the offended look on my face and they're like, well, you know, we mean when she was young, when she a was young... young in taxi cab or something. Yeah, when she was in taxi driver and she was a prostitute. But you I look was like her. Say that. I was going to say good. I look like an old hooker. Good, Kate. You look like an old hooker, and you look great doing it. Thank you. <laughs> enjoy I, the I train ride. Kate, thank, um, you. thank you so much for joining us, and, and continue to enjoy. We're gonna, maybe we can check in uh, on you as the, as the tour continues, and, uh, but uh, we really have been enjoying the segment. So thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for being the first guest. We do appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Okay, take care. That's Kate. And you can follow her at, at CFL Kate on Twitter. And keep in touch with her. Oh, she's great. She's nice, eh? 70 days on a train? Yeah. I forgot to ask her if there was any sex going on in the train, but I didn't want to put her on the spot. Yeah. I'd rather just tell her she looks like a hooker. Why not, eh? <laughs> Seriously, who says that? You look like Jodie Foster? <laughs> a couple of great things. I, again, another image is going to come out of this one. Just the, that lady opening the door, seeing the gray cuff, and shutting the door. <laughs> Would you not at all be curious who put a 100-year-old trophy on your step? Maybe she didn't see it. Maybe she didn't have any peripheral vision. And she... <laughs> I don't know. That is pretty weird. I, I really, really like it. To me, why not, eh? It's just like the greatest thing ever. Why not, eh? Like, it's just a, you know, it's like a life philosophy. That should be your Twitter handle. Why, why not, eh? Why not, eh? Hey, um, another thing that's happening uh, CFL-wise is... Um, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are about to get a new stadium, Dan. Yeah, that was the plan. We showed the plans um, the other night on Sports Center, and um, I don't know if they've been approved, but it's it's a general idea. Preliminary drawings, architect puts together drawings. I need to be an architect. You know how much those drawings they had to pay for those? Fifty bucks? No, it's like half a million. F Fifty dollars? It was like close to six hundred thousand dollars for the model. And the drawings and stuff. That's why George Costanza wanted to be an architect. 
It's the business to make big money. But a couple of things about the stadium. Uh, They were going to go with a domed stadium. They decided that would be a little too much money. So now they have sort of a stadium that keeps the um, spectators covered. Dan's blowing his nose right now. Sorry, I've got a post-nasal drip or something in my right nostril. Got a little problem with the the booger sugar, Dan? (laughs) It just won't stop running. You know what? Bell Media has a wonderful rehab program. (laughs) We care about you. The thing is, uh, that would be, in some weird way, I think that would be so cool if you had this, like, really bad drug problem, and then it started to manifest itself on the air. Uh, it maybe already has. Oh, well, let's talk about it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I already lose control. People do think we are on drugs or drunk on most shows. Well, I'm sure they think they're, we're on drugs or drunk right now. You probably have to be on drugs or drunk to listen to this podcast. We probably should have said that at the beginning of the podcast. You are listening to the <laughs> Jay and Dad podcast brought to you by Mark's Perfectly Press Shirts. Don't use drugs, kids. But the Saskatchewan <laughs> Rough Riders News Stadium... It, it's a beautiful stadium, but our favorite part of that report was the fact that, you know, they're, they're revealing the plans to the media in Regina. Uh, everybody's there, uh, mayor, everyone. And there was one single protester protesting the building of this stadium and using tax dollars to do it. She said there was only one, and that one being her, because it was tough to find out when the meeting was. Let's listen. Um, I'm getting signatures for the stadium petition. There would have been more of us here, except it was difficult to get information on when this uh, display of the stadium stuff was going on. I phoned the mayor's office and was told they wouldn't give out any information. Well, too bad for you, lady. She was literally by herself with a sign. It was one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life. Whenever I see something like that... and. One of the, one protester being interviewed. I always think back to Brian Burke when he was GM of the Canucks, and the uh, the Indy. There was the Indy was a big thing then. That's when it was still cart. It was the hottest ticket in town. They had to close down downtown streets and whatever. It interrupted people for a weekend. But they would always interview like two people that didn't want it. And he said, "Why do we give them the time of day? Why don't we interview every person that wants it as well?" It's a great question. So why, why, why? Just because two people don't like it, do we, do we have to interview them? Anyway, that's my, that's my, that's your Berkey. My two cents. I'll tell you something. Berkey made me mad this week. Oh, I like Berkey. I do. This whole Francois Allaire thing, though, that thing was weird. Yeah, it's the okay, way they on. handle the things. I don't. Understand. You hire a goaltending coach who's you know reported to be the best goalie coach in the world, and he not only is a great goalie coach. He was responsible for tutoring Jean-Sebastien Giguere back when you won the Cup with the Ducks back in 2007. So, presumably, you kind of have a debt to this guy for the rest of your life, don't you? Right. Don't you always have this guy's back at all times? Mm -hmm. So when Francois Allaire says, you know what, there's too much meddling, there's too many cooks in the kitchen, I can't do my job, I'm going to leave. The correct thing to do at that point for the Toronto Maple Leafs is shut the hell up. Don't say anything. He's got a good reputation. Let him walk off into the sunset. People can speculate all they want. And you know what? Had they done that, the story ends. Instead, Berkey, who, again, you and I both like, and he's a friend of the show, and he's, he's very nice to us, um, he comes out and feels the need to defend the organization against this guy. He said, I didn't want to come out and do this publicly, but I feel I have to. Now, he did not have to. No. And, and and it just came, it's like when someone criticizes you, you, you can ignore them and it'll go away. Trust me, it happens to us all the time. It's tough though. If someone, there could be a million positive things on Twitter, but that one person says, you're a jerk. I wish that you'd fall down a hole and die. Right. Y- you feel the need to respond to that person. Do you though? I, I do. don't. Why? I don't. I just block them. Yeah. Well, I don't even do that. I've never even blocked anyone. I like to get that stuff once in a while. I find it funny. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Berkey responds to that, and he says, uh, no one teaches the stand-up style anymore. There's no stand-up goalies right, left. Right, and his butterfly style is outdated and this and that. Listen, this all may be true, but Berkey's not a goalie coach. No. And you've hired this supposedly great goaltending coach, who back in March, as everyone has pointed out, back in March he was still saying he was the best goaltender coach in the world. Who are these people meddling with him? 
who are they sending in there to say, oh, I know you're a great goalie coach, but we're going to send in a couple guys here. Just to Mike Palmatier, Alan Bester. Listen, if, if it was Alan Bester, if it was Mike Palmatier, that's great. But you haven't hired those guys to be the goalie coach. You've hired Francois Allaire to do that. Yeah, it's... The whole thing was really... There's a lot of stuff going on with this team right now that really baffles me. Even the whole James Reimer thing with the... Uh, you know, saying, well, we always wanted to go with James Reimer. Uh, that was that was our plan the whole time. You know, if we said if we could improve our goaltending position, we would. But we think James Reimer is great. What are you talking? It, it's got to be one or the other, doesn't it? The thing with Alaire, you kind of burn your, your chances of getting new blood into the system if you say, okay, this is the way they treat people? Th- this is how it's handled? Right. Y- you can't have your own opinion? And And even as... He was criticizing him. James Reimer is saying, you could tell he felt stupid about the whole thing, yeah. right? You could tell. He was like, well, right. yeah, we talked. There were some tense moments last year. And... Reimer was still all smiles, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, nothing's going to turn that frown, their smile into a frown. It's never going to happen. The happiest guy ever. I love getting clips from him. Except in that NHLPA video. He seems oh, pretty so Glad you brought that, that up. Uh, the night that NHLPA video came up was a message to the fans. Uh, yeah, in case you haven't, we should set that up, in case you haven't, haven't seen that. Yeah, so they posted a video the day that the NHL, what did the NHL do that day? NHL put out the statement on their website. Right. Right. So the players came out and said they they all sat in front of a camera and said, "Oh yeah, I, I played when my my toes were frozen." Came in and thawed them, and then we kept playing. And I I don't I don't know if the NHLPA read the comment section, but uh, they they may have want to got a handle on it before they post it on YouTube. Why? What happened? It's uh, it's, it's it's not good. Give us an example. What are the comments? Uh, you're talking about playing with your toes frozen uh, for nothing. Yet you um, won't sign a deal now. Right, right. Fair enough. I mean, this whole, this lockout thing is such a, this is a tough one. Uh, I thought it was interesting what Guy Lafleur said. The man uh, that refuses to age. Okay, Guy Lafleur, first of all, looks unbelievable for his age. And, uh, I mean, the guy used to smoke a pack of cigarettes every game. Yeah, he smoked darts during intermissions. In between playing, you know, he'd be, he'd be pe- first period of Boston and Montreal, and Lafleur would crush six or seven darts, right? He'd be going for a dart. That's what he'd be doing. Maybe that smoke just uh, encased his face. Hey, going for a dart. That's what Guy was doing. But he came out and said something interesting yesterday. Again, you always expect the old timers now that they've presumably been taken care of pension wise and everybody's, there's supposed to be the solidarity and you saw all the players together with Don Fear. Then suddenly Guy Lafleur comes out yesterday and says this. It's tough to uh, sympathize with them because you know uh, they were getting say, 57 percent of their uh, the, the profit uh, of the uh, marketing, or and uh, it should be 50-50. You know, uh, they should split the, the, the pie in half, and uh, let's take half. And I think it's fair. Wow. Well, a lot of those guys didn't get half of what they should have been paid in their day. I agreed. Uh, I I don't disagree with that. But you just wonder if you're a player now. And you're presumably making sacrifices for players that are going to come after you. How do you feel about Guy saying that? Well, I mean, just like Medano. A... Medano came out the other day, said uh, the lockout cost him $7 million. He amazing. says it wasn't worth it at all. Isn't that amazing? I mean, and, and that's the kind of stuff, obviously, the PA doesn't want that out there. But I really think we're going to have a whole year of no hockey. No, pandemic. don't even say that. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's my personal opinion. Hey, this podcast, the Jay and Dan podcast, brought to you by Marks, is all about opinions, Dan. And that's my opinion. Someone um, sent me a funny tweet. I think you were included on it. <laughs> they said, well, when are you going to start broadcasting the KHL games? And when's the KHL uh, trade deadline day ne- hosted by Nikolai Boroshevsky? <laughs> One of my favorite uh, Borshevsky stories is that they used to have, in the old Maple Leaf Gardens, they used to have banners that said Superstar, and they had all the Leaf greats, right? So that, you know, like Gil Sittler, Superstar, Keon, Superstar. And then they actually had Borshevsky, Superstar. And I was thought, yeah, that was, that was a bit premature. <laughs> I, my, 
maybe not a superstar. Um, don't don't even suggest though no hockey. Either. I just feel like that's it's it's going to be a struggle. By the way, um, we are going to be growing mustaches again for November, so make sure you keep your eye out for that. We'll check you on Twitter and we'll let you we know where tr- you can. We tried to in. grow lockout beards. Well, we wanted to grow beards until the lockout ended, and uh, and our bosses liked the idea, but I think the thought was maybe that would take away from November a little bit. So what we're going to do is grow the mustaches for November, and then in December. We will start the beards then, and then presumably grow them all year because I don't think there's going to be hockey. I hope I'm wrong, Dan. Hartnell's growing one. Giroux's growing one. Yeah. A couple of friends of the show. Forget it. I just don't think... I think they're too far apart right now. If I was the players, I'd be really tempted to try to get like a 53-47 split in favor of the players right now. Right now. In exchange for some other concessions. And no pay cuts. I'm with them on no pay cuts. But I side with the players when they say, okay, th- why does this keep happening? And wh- how is it our fault? No, it's not their fault. I know. That's the problem. That's why I do sympathize with the players in that sense. But yeah, at the Learn same how time, to run a business. Don't give us these massive contracts if you don't want to honor them. I agree. But that's also a, a market-to-market thing, right? I mean, if uh, in Winnipeg, if they don't sign Evander Kane long-term, then the fans in that market are upset. And so if they do it, then the fans in that market are happy. If in Edmonton they don't sign Everly and Hall to long-term deals, the fans in those markets are upset. But, as you pointed out, as far as an entire visual for the league, it doesn't look great. I think, I do think 50-50 is fair. Can we, come, can we just do 50-50 and just play? Can't they just play while they work on a new contract? No, that never works. Dan. Okay. Um, switching to football briefly as you're watching the Jane Dan podcast presented by Mark's you're listening. pressed shirts. Did I say watching? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's being videotaped, is it? Actually, we can maybe th- talk about doing that kind of Why thing. Why not, eh? And think about it. Who wants to sit and watch us talk? I think a lot of people would like to do that. There's like six or seven of those shows on TV right now. Aren't they go- isn't Savalski eventually going to have a show where he just sits and talks? By the way, Savalski, and for those of you listening in other markets, James Savalski, who you may have seen on TSN, hosts an afternoon radio superstar show on TSN Radio in Toronto. And he is really, there's, some, there's a bee in his bonnet right now. He's turning into a real fierce guy. Seaballs. Is, is he letting loose on radio? Just yeah. losing it? Letting loose on the Blue Jays. Letting loose on the Leafs. He's like really getting fired up lately. It's pretty Bill easy Daly. to let loose on both. Right yeah, now. but Bill Daly, remember he had that interview with Bill Daly? He went nuts on Daly. Hey, Daly, grow some hair! Yeah, you got pretty upset at him. Didn't get upset at CTV Toronto news anchor Ken Shaw. I certainly hope that didn't happen because that would be a bad thing if you ask me. I would never want him to get mad at a... A man who had such a beautiful voice as Kenny Shaw. You're waiting for a clip? It didn't come. <laughs> I just want to say... That- we'll see you tonight on CTV News at 6. There it is. What a voice. Yeah, if you, if you aren't in the Toronto area, that voice semi-haunts me. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> Speaking of great voices, congratulations to Rod Smith, who's named uh, Best Sportscaster of the Year. By Sports Media Canada. This was on Thursday. A couple of things. We completely concur with this honor. I mean, he is a wonderful person. And, and the, probably the nicest broad- guy. Yeah, incredible broadcaster. Super nice person. Uh, the voice of a nation. Just a great voice. And did an incredible job in London this summer, didn't you think? Like, yeah. Calling the swimming, calling the diving. He was first rate. One problem I have, what is Sports Media <laughs> Canada? What is that? Why were were we not invited to join that and vote? Is some guy runs a blog in his basement? No, some you know this this was all over Twitter on Thursday. I was like, congratulations, you at sports. I'm like, who is that? What, is that a leaflet? <laughs> Handed out and broadcasting. School? Who else won? Uh, and our friend Bruce Arthur. Oh, Bruce Arthur, who uh, appears on TSN radio often, and and uh, TSN's the reporters on Sunday morning with Dave Hodge. Bruce wins. Uh, best sports writer of the year. Again, well-deserved, did a great job in London as well. Uh, and I believe he had credentials, Dan. One day I'll win an award. You won a Gemini. Everyone at TSN's won some sort of award. I've never been nominated. I think you're best runt uh, drowner. <laughs> uh, I wanted to switch to football uh, as you're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast, presented by Mark's Perfectly Pressed Shirts. They are. They're crisp. Oh, yeah, you just take those out of the dryer, put them on. Sure, your skin will burn, but you'll look good. <laughs> and uh, we, I just wanted to talk football a little bit. And I, 
I, I decided to do this earlier with Chris Schultz. I, I chatted with Schultzy a little bit earlier and, and was without you because but you were late. Schultzy's not coming in? No, Schultzy's not coming in. I did this earlier <sighs> with him. Yeah. So let's uh, take a listen to what Schultzy had to say. He was at the Monday Nighter this past Monday between Atlanta and Denver. He got to see Peyton. And uh, let's give a listen to that. Brought to you by Mark's Never Iron Perfectly Press Shirts. This is the Jay and Dan Podcast. I totally agree, Schultzy. Dan is not just an amateur at sports casting, but an amateur at life. <laughs> is this on? Is this mic on? Ah, uh, we're just kidding. You always have to remember the mic is always on. That's actually, uh, that should be the first thing everybody teaches kids in broadcasting. That's exactly right. In. You know, exactly never, right. never say anything bad about anyone while that mic is in front of you. Right, or you are. pinned to your lapel. Okay, Chris Schultz is with us. I'm so excited to have you here. You just came back for the Monday Nighter, uh, Falcons and Broncos. First of all, the atmosphere around Atlanta, such a weird sports town. They they struggle to draw fans for the Atlanta Hawks and the Braves, even though the Braves have had all the success. The hockey teams have left en masse. And now the Falcons looked like a good crowd. What was the atmosphere from your perspective? Well, for the Monday night game, it was fantastic, especially early because you know, when we have the opportunity to represent ourselves down at the Sports Center, we get these passes, and you're on the sidelines for the warm-ups, and you're on the sidelines until they – you know, the escorts come and they say, you know, you got to get out of here, kid. So you finally leave, but you get a great opportunity to be on the field, and it's loud. It, it, the way I can kind of envision it is BC Place is a huge, wide-air uh, dome type of atmosphere. Georgia Dome is more condensed. You're closer to the football field. Part of it is because, you know, the NFL field is more slender and it's shorter. And part of it is just that the sidelines and the first seats are closer. And because of that, the noise is... Out, outstanding. I mean, it, it would be a great place to play because you truly do have a home field advantage. So the energy was fantastic. As the game developed, the the dis, disassociation of the flow because of the refereeing really hurt the game. And we're sitting up there in, in the media center watching this game, and we're wondering, man, these fans, you know, after a while, they're starting to boo. After a while, whenever there was a penalty, and then a discussion of a penalty, then a challenge on the penalty, and then more interaction with the coaches. It took away from the game, and it took away from the atmosphere. The second half was a little bit better, Jay, but that first half lasted over two hours for one I, half of football. I thought it was interesting what Steve Young said afterward, where he said there's no incentive. The owners don't care. There's no incentive for them to negotiate with the referees because it's not making them any money. The mm -hmm. ratings are still high. People are still coming to games. We're all complaining about it en masse. We all see how much it's affecting the games, but we're still watching them. The ratings aren't going down. Do you subscribe to that thing? Well, I'll use the comparison of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They haven't won in the longest time, and people still go. That's a and great comparison. That way, that, that, there's a similar way in football in the, in the States. I mean, Georgia is an SEC college town. That The University of Georgia, the college sports, are probably number one. As you expressed, they've lost their hockey team. Their basketball team does not necessarily draw. And when their football team is not doing well, they don't necessarily draw. But it still is a type of atmosphere when you have a winning organization, a winning team that's second to none. So I, I think what they have to really consider is, you know, if, if you're a young man or you're, you're a family and you pay your money to go there, you expect a flow. You expect a competitive game. And what was so disappointing was you had one team in Matt Ryan as a quarterback that had so much success with the no huddle. You had the other team in Denver that had so much success with the no huddle. So I was I was expecting one of these real fast paced games that maybe would be done within a three hour time limit, and the exact opposite happened. And when you have these breaks in football, it destroys the game. You have your TV commercials, you have your timeouts, you have your injuries. Those things aren't going to change. But the one thing the NFL can do to change the game is to get their referees back. The issues are pretty simple. They want a little bit more money. They want to protect their pensions, even though they're part time workers. They don't want to be asked to be full-time because then for the most of them, they have to give up their other job. And in some cases, some of these referees are lawyers and, and, and people that are having very good secondary occupations. And then there's a sense that they want an emergency crew, that they can fly in there and they want the referees to compete to be to see who is the best, and they don't want that other. So I think this is going to take quite a while for it to resolve. Let's talk about Peyton Manning, because in the first week, he looked so great against the Steelers, and especially in that second half when he was going to the no huddle, everyone was like, wow, this is the Peyton we know. This looks great. And then in that Monday nighter against the Falcons, he threw, obviously he threw the picks, but more than that, it was the, the actual football. You looked at the football, it looked like it was wobbling, didn't look like tight spirals, and then you have his backup saying if it had come down to a Hail Mary at the end that Peyton would have thrown the Hail Mary, it would have been the backup. From your perspective, having been there, what did you see from Peyton? 
I saw a tinge of inefficiency when it came to throwing the football from 20 yards on. Now, if you were to take all the longer passes and evaluate him, you'd have to also take a look at his footwork. Was his footwork clean? Did he have to adjust his footwork due to the pass rush? Were there receivers where they were supposed to be? And was he throwing into a window, which means you have to throw it in a velocity type of scenario, or are you throwing to touch pass it into the receiver's hand? Like if you're throwing a fade, it's not supposed to be a hard pass. It's supposed to float into the receiver's hand. If you're throwing uh, a crossing pattern, you're supposed to lead the receiver. Each throw has a very specific type of energy behind it. It's kind of like baseball pitchers. Baseball pitchers have three, four, five pitches that they keep mixing up. The quarterback has three, four, five different type of passes that are coordinated with the type of routes and in some cases the type of receiver that they're throwing to. So I do think there is a, a relevant conversation here as to whether his arm has the same amount of strength. But still, Peyton Manning at about 85% is probably better than the majority of the quarterbacks in the NFL. So I, I think it's something you're going to monitor. Here's the key issue. As the season goes on, you're throwing in practice, you're throwing in the warm-ups, you're throwing in the games, you're throwing, you're throwing, you're throwing. Your arm gets tired. So if I'm John Fox, you know, I have to have a conversation with Peyton Manning. I say, look, you got to be honest with me. You have to tell me when you feel fatigue, and we won't throw that day. We'll, t- we'll have an, a no-throw day, whether that's a Wednesday, whether that's a Friday. Pick a day. Maybe it's the best thing to do is not to throw the day before the game so you get your rest, but it will be something that will see develop as the season moves on. Did you make it to any of Patrick Ewing's favorite spots in Atlanta? <laughs> Just say yes or no. You don't have to explain. Only in my mind. Oh, man. I I wish I could have played with Patrick back in the day. <laughs> Just imagine all the fun he had. Except he was the sweatiest athlete in the history of professional <laughs> sports. Schultz, thanks for joining us. Thank you. My God! Just glistening like, like Patrick Ewing in the fourth quarter. Patrick Ewing was so sweaty. He was always just dripping. But then, who am I to talk? I go on the craft tour and I sing and dance and I sweat through my suit. I've got no. You get the, the sweaty upper lip yeah, all I the get time. The sweat on my upper lip. People probably think I have my my own problem with the booger sugar. But it now that uh, we've seen your mustachio, yeah. I believe it fertilizes the upper lip. I think so too. I should just have the mustache all year round. The mustache. Here on the Jane Dan podcast, the mustache. If we did grow beards, though, I would be put to shame because you have you ever grown a beard? I have, yeah, and I'm going to grow another mean one. I'm. That's kind of why, secretly, selfishly, I hope this lockout goes all year. Someone said you'd look like a uh, Kleberger from the rugby oh yeah, team. Craig Kleberger, yeah. Oh man, Adam, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, um, so uh, you got something else you want to talk? Yeah, about. Yeah, I wanted to uh, since it's uh, our podcast sponsored by Marks. I thought we'd play a game, have the mark of the day. Okay, let's do it. Uh, Let's see who the Plinko board finds for the mark of the day. It's a big Plinko board. It's a a very large Oh, look where it landed. Now guess this mark. That's uh, Mark McGrath from yes. Sugar Ray. Corey O'Toole selected that one. Wow, Mrs. O'Toole. That's a good one that she selected. It, remember back in the day, didn't he uh, date Madonna? He was like, uh, or, or I don't know, 70th or 80th boyfriend. And then he hosted Entertainment Tonight for a bit, yeah, didn't he? he was, or, no, he was on Extra. Right, he was on Extra. And, yeah, you know what? Give those guys credit. They really milked that for a few years with very little talent. I always, com- I always confuse them in Third Eye Blind. Yeah, they kind of have very similar sounds. Matchbox Twenty? No, you you know Matchbox Twenty when you hear it, and you immediately turn the channel. Yeah, you definitely do. That's good. I like the mark of the day. Yeah. That's a good one. Oh, by the way, uh, to our listeners to the podcast, we want you uh, to send us your tweets. Uh, send to at Jay Onright or at TSNO Tool, and uh, tell us what you think about the podcast, good or bad. We are going to award uh, to the person with the tweet of the week next week. That's our new segment next week, tweet of the week. We will award you with a Marks package of great clothing and fun stuff. So I tell you, they gave us a tour of their store, and their stuff, it took me aback. I didn't know they had such good stuff. They've got yoga pants. Yeah. They've got stuff you wouldn't even believe. Marks has totally changed their style. They're, they're changing their image up. So we're going to send you a package of great stuff. Send us your tweets. Tweet of the week. I'm just picturing you now walking around your house in Mark's yoga pants. I Actually, that's all I wear at home. I go shirtless, no undies, and just yoga pants, hugging the curves of my buttocks. 
So if you have a buddy that wears yoga pants and his house smells like cat urine, do you, do you tell him? You know what you do at that point? You just just take a take a shot right at his face. With <laughs> you defriend him. Yeah. Unfriend him on Facebook. Befriend is my most hated word. It sounds like you aren't friends with the person when you befriend a person. You don't want to befriend me? No, it sounds like, hey, we're enemies. But no, we're buddies. We're befriending each other. Hey, we are buddies, and this has been the Jay and Dan Podcast, brought to you by Mark's Perfectly Pressed Shirts. I think think we're going to wrap it up for the week, Dan. I think this was pretty successful. Yeah, every Thursday, new podcast. You can find it on tsn.ca, then on iTunes a few days later. Or you can just listen on TSN Radio. That's true. Yeah, we're all over TSN Radio throughout the weekend. Uh, Big thanks to Kate McKenna, and a big thanks to Chris Schultz, the big man for being on the show in the first week. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to the party. Yeah, yeah you were late. Jerks. Sorry. Thanks for listening. Bye. Hey, going for a dart. They're going home. Brought to you by Mark's Never on.